Oops. Greetings. Hello. Who's here? Thanks for joining me. Uh, normally, I was remember I, I did that uh, book reading from the uh, new edition last Friday, and uh, I said I'd do it on Fridays. But this coming Friday, my student Ben is going to join me, uh, and so rather than do it Friday, I'm going to do it today. I'm going to read a little bit uh, from the book. Us Frederick, hey Puredo, how's that? <laughs> Good to see you all the way from Sweden. Uh, hey Gaza. So Frederick's from Sweden and Gaza's from down the mountain. Isn't that cool? This is what I was talking to Paddy Pinto today. You might be familiar. I've mentioned Paddy from the uh, his Kyokushin Shuffle. That's his link there. And uh, Paddy was saying how one thing really cool about this is how now we've got an opportunity with, to train with people from all over the world and meet people that you've never done before, n never met before. Damien, us, Torbjorn, hey, good to see you. I sent you a, I'm not sure, I hope you got the message I sent uh, to the Patreon members. Um, thanks for joining me. Damien, Daniel also. Us, Raj, Kumar from, uh, all the way from Nepal. Thanks for joining me. And Rob de Souza from Tassie. So from one end of the earth to the other, we've got Rob's from Tassie, Torbjorn's from uh, 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 Norway, um, Frederick's from Sweden. Uh, so from everywhere, man, that's so cool. Um, good to see you all. Uh, look, today I think what I'm going to do is, um, I st even though I just wanted to do a little reading from a book, and I'm going to I'm going to read that. Say, us, us, Mike, good to see you. Konnichiwa. Uh, I'm going to read that section, which is a part of the uh, uh, history section from the Budo Karate of Masayama, uh, the second edition. It's so fascinating, the history of Kyokushin, and of course, you know, some people aren't 100% aware of it, and particularly they're not aware of um, the intimate connection Kyokushin has with the sport of kickboxing, you know, and even the crossover from uh, Western uh, martial arts and training into Muay Thai, you know. Uh, so I'm going to read that whole section. It's a fantastic section. What's Rochelle, all the way from Canada, so... Torbjorn, Frederick from Scandinavia, Scandinavia, Rochelle from Canada, Mike from Tassie via Perth or Perth via Tassie, Raj from Nepal, everyone. It's always fantastic to have you along. Thanks for coming along. I think I'll do a little bit of a stretch anyway. Look, if you're like me, I, I trained this morning, but all I did this morning was have a little bit of a uh, – I finished that big translation that I'm, I was doing from Japan. Big, big job. Paul. Kneep from Germany, good to see you, man. And Chrissy, all the way up from uh, North Queensland on the Barrier Reef. Good on you, Chris. Uh, so I finished that translation job, and boy, oh boy, it was a, a fascinating job to do because uh, I learned so much about karate just doing it. But also, um, it took stole a lot of my time. So this morning I got up uh, early and had a bit of a stretch and everything, um, but I didn't train real hard. So I think today what I'm going to do is um, I've got training from five which is in a couple of hours. Ben, good to see you, buddy. Ben Tipper, also another Perth boy who lives over here now. Good to see you. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll do a bit of a warm-up and a stretch and just get the body moving a little bit. It's always good to do for some of you. Maybe you've trained today, maybe you haven't. But And depending on who you are and your age, well, sometimes just the warm-up is enough. But I've, I've, I cut the deck of cards into four quarters. And, uh, you know, we don't have time to do it all, but I'm going to grab 13 of the cards, left the uh, jokers out. I've got 13 of the cards here. I think the, the burpees are pretty well divided up. I'm just going to have a quick look. Well, this has got a few burpees, but the one that I've picked has got even more. So we'll do a quarter of a deck, and then I'll get back and I'll do this uh, read of this section of my book. And if you've got any questions about anything too, particularly that uh, uh, Carter brief that we did on Monday where we were talking about the um, uh, the Bunkai and the application of Bunkai, if you're one of a Patreon family, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. You would have received um, the uh, email with that um, Patreon 
a printout I did that the uh, PDF file that I did for the Patreon members, uh, which goes into a far more depth on the uh, Bunkai training and so on. Um, so uh, I hope you got that and I hope it's useful to you. So anyway, we'll get going. Uh, nice quick start. We'll uh, just do a little bit of a warm up and we'll hit these 13 cards and then you can grab a drink of water. I know that I'm gonna grab my sweater. Gaza will like this. I've got my good Gold Coast North Dojo winch heater on, although it's not too cold today. So anyway, let's get going. And don't forget, if you've got any questions, start typing them now because it does take a little bit of time for them to come through on the, uh, on the chat. But if the questions are there, I can work on them later. Let's go. It's always hard to get up after. How's that? That gets me in the frame, does it? How's that? Okay, knees around inch B, sun, she, hunter inch B, sun, she, squatting inch B, sun, she, B, B, sun, she, sun, B, sun, she, she, B, sun, she, your drums dangle. Hips itch, knee, sun, hunter itch, knee, sun, double shoulder width, twisting itch, knee, sun, chi, go, hook, itch, touch, two, two, itch, knee, sun, chi, go, hook, itch, touch, two, and two. Pull the right. And left. Good. Three count. Bend the right leg. Nice and relaxed. Let gravity open you up. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, take your weight underside to let the weight go to underneath everything underneath your arms underneath your body underneath your legs and that'll help open you up push forward Here too, you can pull the leg up too. Wes was doing that the other night on the KRT live stream. You can do it this way. Another way you can do this is actually sit on the ground in front of your sofa and put your leg on the sofa. That'll really stretch the quads and also the hip flexes. Good. And around. All the way around. Toes are up, find the space, find the spot. So everything just relaxes in. Other side. I did a fun session the other night with uh, Darren Stringer and Wes Janssen. I'll see if I can find the link and put it up. I don't think I have the link right now. Nice and relaxed. Around. Another shout out to my Patreon family. It's really fantastic and uh, it's really making a difference to what I'm doing. 
it's allowing me to do all these videos which I wouldn't normally have the capacity to do. I've got the time, I just don't have these, this equipment. So I've been able to get some uh, good stuff to keep going. I don't want to stop when the COVID-19 stops. I want to keep going afterwards and keep bringing these videos. Nice relaxed. Remember, take a breath. And then let the weight settle down on the bottom side of everything. Let's go across once more, a bit quicker now. It's me. Son. It's me. Son. Chico Dutch. The shoulder I just realized I haven't turned the lights on. Must be a bit dark. Right. Again, left. Right. Deep. And from there, Shkobuni. Straight again, pull the right. The left. You can only reach your knee, that's fine. You just go to your limit and then breathe. Middle. And yeah. just turn a few lights on, I I don't know if that'll make a difference. Good. Yo, Migi, Sanchin, that's yoi. So when you do yoi now, even something as simple as yoi is so profound. And it's, it always surprises me how few people really know how to do yoi, but as we were saying the other day, you know, um, maybe I wasn't saying it here, I was saying it to a training. The first thing you learn when you walk into a dojo is how to stand in yoi, okay? But people don't understand it because yoi is a little bit like attention in the military. If someone says in the military, attention, it's not like you go, whatever, you know, you come, bang, and you stand up strong because you're out of tension. Well, it's the same with yoi. When you're at Fudo Dutch and just relax, it's one thing. When the instructor says yoi, your feet go from out to straight, your knees bite in a little bit, your toes bite in the ground, you get a little bit of tension into the lower gut, and you're, you're ready. You know, that's what yoi means, ready. So we go yoi. And you're ready, there's tension, feet are parallel, the whites of your toes are visible. But something as simple as yoi can be so important because yoi is the first step of everything. And if you don't get yoi right, you always, it's amazing how I see it. People who never take yoi seriously never take anything else seriously. But if you get yoi serious, you can do anything because it teaches you all the fundamentals, how to bite in with the toes, how to bend the knees slightly, how to put a bit of tension in the legs, how to place attention in the focus in the tundra in the lower gut and how to stand with good posture. Okay, all that comes from yoi. That's the very first thing you learn in training. Okay, let's go from there, Migi, Sanchin, that's yoi. Dip. 
Yeah, right hand up. Moshi Uke. Bitch. Hey. Come to the left. See? Let it stretch your spine. Go to behind. Go. Pitch down. Cut. Not a. Yasume. When they say Yasume, that's when you can relax. Okay, arms forward, itch. Hey, sign of hunter, itch. Hey, son, this newspaper is annoying me. Okay, let's get straight into the deck of cards. We know we, we haven't got time to do the whole deck, I'm sorry. If you're young, you should be doing the whole deck. And if you're in your 20s or even 30s and fit, you should be trying to pump out as many as you can and just stop when I stop. That's it's that simple. Okay, so let's go. First card. Ace of spades. That's 10 push-ups. Five spades. Five push ups. Itch, deep, sun, she, dog. Next one. Ace of hearts. Ten burpees. I know there's a few burpees in this because I checked just before. Itch, deep, sun. <laughs> Shake. Go. Go. The young do a jump there. Pitch. Touch. Go. Go. What's up? Next one. Ace. The clubs. Gee, that's three out of four aces in this quarter deck. Pitch. Nip. Sun. Hey. Go. Rook. Pitch. Punch. Go. Go. King of clubs. So that's uh, 13 squats. Pitch. Me. Sun. Gee. Go, go, hit, hard, two, two, whoops, pitch, knee, <laughs> son. Stop the 10 wishful thinking. Whoa, coming thick and fast. This is a tough quarter deck. Jack of hearts, 11 burpees. Let's go, pitch, deep. Sun, shape. If you're not doing them, if you're just watching, do something. Go, go, pitch, touch, give, give. Pitch. Next one. Queen of clubs. Didn't sit this one. That's for sure. Ready. 12 squats. Pitch. Me. Son. Me. Go. Go. Pitch. Touch. Q. Q. Pitch. Five diamonds. Doing those squats reminds me of a story. If I remember, I'll tell you. Ready, five diamonds, five sit ups. Bitch, me, son, she, go. Next one. Six 
Hearts. A lot of hearts. Remember, no hands when you get up. Pendulum. Push. Stand up. Okay, six burpees. Let's go. Itch. Deep. Sun. Shape. Go. Go. Nice. Next one. Six. Diamond. Six more sit ups. Ready? Let's. Nip. Sun. Cheek. Go. Go. Next one. Whoa. They're coming thick and fast. Seven hearts. Remember, no hands. Legs, thrust the hip, straight, stand. Okay, seven hearts. Let's go. Pitch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Look. Pitch. Good one. And four diamonds. Ready, hitch. Hit. Some. Chi. Lucky last. <laughs> Five of clubs. Easy. So no hands getting up. Pendulum. Push. Stand straight. Five clubs. Five uh, squats. Ready? Pitch. Knee. Sun. Key, go. Okay, grab a drink, wipe the sweat off, and I'll see you in a minute. Put them there. Don't know if that makes a difference. You put it here. See that makes it. That'll do. Okay, okay. Grab a drink. If you're young and fit, you should smash that. Sivitri, good to see you, man. Rod, you know, show myself. Dio two. Dio two. Hi, buddy. Where are you from, Rio two? I think this is the first time I've seen your name, perhaps. Uh, and Patty. Patty, I put Patty's link up above there. I was just saying, I was uh, talking to you earlier and we were talking about a few things. <laughs> yeah, look, Patty, what Patty and I were talking about, which I mentioned earlier in the conversation, is how fantastic it is that, you know, every, every experience balances. And I've done this as a project for pretty well everything that I can think of from a, a death, a close death in the family to uh, storms where there's flooding to blackouts in the house. And here we are at the COVID-19 lockdown. And like Patty says, it's an opportunity to train with people. I guarantee these uh, online sessions wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for the night COVID-19. I'd be too busy at the dojo. So I wouldn't have had the time. So Patty and I were talking today about how we've got an opportunity to train with Darren and Wes in Northern uh, America, uh, Northern uh, uh, Northern Hemisphere over in Europe. We've got, uh, you know, um, even Oishi Shihan did a session online. You know, we have uh, sessions all over the world where we can join in. Judd Reed does sessions. I don't know if he's available to public. There might just be free students. But nevertheless, what a great opportunity. And here, look, here's Raj all the way from Nepal joining in with us. You're not feeling well today? Don't get sick, man. If you're not feeling well, stay stay safe. Uh, you know, you got uh, my buddy Tom in North America doing great on line stuff and these are the see you put a line down the page and, and write you know pluses and minuses or benefits and drawbacks or 
you know, positives and negatives. And I guarantee you can find just as many good as bad. Hey, Al, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming along. Okay, so I'm going to read a section from the Budo Karate Masayama, the second edition. Uh, if you're familiar with the first edition, you'll notice there's a few uh, differences, changes. I've just added a lot more information uh, about areas which previously was perhaps a little more difficult to access information on, but also since the passing of Masayama, there's been a lot more has been written about him and so on. So uh, it's a great opportunity. Okay, so I'm just going to read this section. This particular section I love because it it tells you how important Kyokushin was in the creation of the sport named kickboxing, okay? Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll even mention the name of uh, the man who coined the phrase kickboxing, okay? So this first section's uh, on Bobby Lowe. In 1952, Masayama gave his first demonstration in Hawaii. Those present were not really sure what to expect. The history of Chinese and Japanese martial arts in Hawaii was already long and the island chain had seen its share of charlatans. Oyama began the demonstration with a performance of Pinan Yondang, Kata. The Hawaiians had seen them before, so the spectators, somewhat disappointed, politely settled down to what was expected to be another average martial arts demonstration. Some even began to leave. Sensing the disappointment, Oyama moved straight on to the next part of his demonstration, Tameshiwari. Whilst the Hawaiian spectators may have been familiar with kata, Oyama was certain they had not seen what he was about to do. His feats of power in board and brick breaking have never been rivaled to this day. Oyama completed his performance by bending an American quarter completely out of shape with one hand. The Hawaiian audience had never seen anything like the power Oyama displayed that day. And we're not talking about a... Uh, you know, a 120 kilogram, um, you know, performance enhancing drug driven power lifter. We're talking Masayama was about five foot nine and, you know, like 173 or so centimeters and 78 or 80 kilograms. So he wasn't a big man. So to be able to perform these feats was just crazy. His, uh, the Hawaiian audience had never seen anything like the power Oyama displayed that day. The 23-year-old Bobby Lowe was amongst the crowd and recalls he was without a doubt the most powerful martial art artist I had ever seen. And at this point, 1952, Masayama was about 29. Bobby sought out Oyama after the performance and arranged to train with him for the remaining two weeks of Oyama's Hawaii stay. In so doing, Lowe became Oyama's first international student and remained loyal to his teacher for the next 60 years until his passing in 2011, eventually becoming the highest ranked instructor in Kyokushin under Masayama. Lowe had become involved in the martial arts at an early stage, early age. His father was an instructor of Kung Fu, so he grew up practicing various types of Chinese martial arts. Besides Kung Fu, Bobby Lowe participated in any fighting art he could find. By the time he was 23, when he met Masayama, Bobby Lowe had earned his Yondan in Judo, Nidan in Kempo, Shodan in Aikido, and was a highly regarded welterweight Golden Gloves boxer. He had met and trained with many fine martial artists, yet Oyama's power performance, powerful performance, had stunned him like nothing before. Six months after the first demonstration, Oyama returned to Hawaii for three weeks training every day with his new friend. It was at this time that Oyama invited Bobby to Tokyo the following year to train at his new dojo. Although there were no formal uchi deshi live-in students at this stage, Oyama had been giving much thought to the ideas of live-in students who could dedicate themselves to 1,000 days for the beginning. He discussed these ideas with Lowe and suggested he remain and train in a fashion similar to this for as long as he could. This he did, and for over one and a half years, Bobby Lowe lived and trained daily at the Oyama Dojo with his friend and teacher, Masayama. In doing so, Bobby Lowe went from being Masayama's first international student to being the first resident student of Kyokushin, a tradition that later grew, later grew to be known as the Wakajishi, 
or the young lions of Masoyama. A select few were chosen by Oyama himself from hundreds of applications each year to devote themselves wholeheartedly to karate for 1,000 days, living at the dojo and training under the master. This tradition has also spread throughout the world with similar programs found in Australia, North America, Africa and Europe. In 1957, Shihan Lo returned to his home in Hawaii and opened the school of Oyama, the first Kyokushin dojo outside of Japan. He returned to Japan every year for almost the next 10 years to train with Sosai Oyama. Shihan Bobby Lo was loved and respected worldwide for his gentle manner, his depth of knowledge, and his informal but deeply knowledgeable teaching style. In particular, Shihan Lo was an authority on the Tencho Kata and Sosai Oyama's body of Goshin Jutsu, the techniques of self defense. Until his passing, Xi'an Lo continued to instruct regularly in Hawaii and all over the world. Kyokushin students from everywhere will attest to his humble hospitality and willingness to train with anyone. I was, like so many, also privileged to have benefited from his kindness and friendship. Often my work took me to Honolulu and every morning that I was there, Xi'an Lo would pick me up at my hotel and we would find some space, usually a remote corner of a nearby golf club where we would do kata together for an hour or more before we headed off for breakfast at his favorite diner, Treasured Memories. I recall one interesting story Shihan Lo told me. When he first began training with Masoyama, he was in his mid-twenties and Oyama was in his early thirties. They were six years apart and at the peak of physical power. They would drill self-defense techniques, gradually increasing the intensity until they were going all out. Shihan Lo told the story. His grip strength was beyond what most people can understand. He would grip my wrist and it felt like a vice. In fact, I once went home and wrapped my arm in a towel and put it in my, my vice and tightened it until it felt like soul size grip. No other person I ever trained with in my life had a grip even close to his. On one occasion after such a training session, I met him for breakfast. My wrists were both terribly swollen and deeply bruised from his vice-like grip, grip the day before. So I looked at my wrists, then looked at me sheepishly and bowed his head. I'm sorry, I went too hard. I wasn't at all concerned, but that day we trained kata instead, he laughed. I have to tell you, many hear stories of the young Masayama's power and doubt whether it is true. Well, I saw and felt that power and it is all true. And the real key to his punching power was his speed. He was so fast you can't imagine. In addition to his martial arts, Xi'an Lo was also a graduate of the University of Hawaii and a very well known and respected member of the Honolulu community. His passing in 2011 left a void in the Kyokushin world that cannot be filled. I'm just quickly challenging, checking, hi Al. Good to see you, buddy. The second, Alan Lloyd and Alan, all the way from uh, Bristol, I believe. Good on you. Okay, going on. This section is called the Tokyo Hombu Muay Thai Challenge, Kyokushin, in brackets, and beyond. The history of connection between Kyokushin karate and the kickboxing sport is fascinating. In 1963, just making a change here. In 1963, Osamu Noguchi, a boxing promoter with links to Thailand's boxing and Muay Thai world, approached Masayama with an offer, a challenge of sorts, to Japanese karate from the Muay Thai Association in Thailand to send some fighters. That uh, Osamu Noguchi, I've got a footnote, Noguchi was a boxing referee and promoter. His father, Susumu Lion Noguchi, and his brother, Noguchi were both all Japan professional boxing champions. It was Osamu Noguchi who first coined the term kickboxing in 1964 after the Kyokushin versus Muay Thai match and established the first World International Kickboxing Association. Quite often, uh, some Americans uh, say that they established the WKA first, but uh, Osamu Noguchi. Uh, he created the first International Kickboxing Association, which was called the World Kickboxing Association, WKBA, in 1964. Anyway, he offered the challenge to Japanese karate from the Muay Thai Association in Thailand. It was Muay Thai's first steps 
into international competition. Oyama immediately accepted. He asked Kenji, the devil, Kurosaki, his chief instructor at the Hombu Dojo, to prepare the dojo's assistant instructors and four strongest fighters for the challenge. Yasuhiko Oyama, Hirofumi Okada, Tadashi Nakamura, and Akio Fujihira. Kurosaki began with a, a month-long intensive live-in gashku at, at Kinugawa, about 100 kilometers north of Tokyo. Whilst the usual training camps focused on more traditional methods of training the body and mind, this camp's objective was centered around becoming familiar with the rules of Muay Thai under which they would fight. Using boxing gloves, dealing with the powerful Thai-style shin kicks, and adjusting their training away from the concept of the single bare fist blow to thinking in terms of flowing combinations with gloved hands followed by Muay Thai style throws was all very new. In addition, it was not just hard training. Oyama wanted Kurosaki to develop a strong team brotherhood as they would have to rely strongly on each other during their time in Thailand. They stayed in their isolated retreat for one month with each day's team building lifestyle and training building a base for tomorrow. For a dojo whose primary role had always been to develop students with a courageous Budo spirit to attain victory over the self, this training focused on victory against another person, another in fighting sport, in a fighting sport, was very new. The intensity and depth of that one month of training made the gap between these four top fighters and the rest of the students in the dojo even wider. The challenge scheduled for October 1963 was postponed until December, then postponed again until January 1964. With each postponement due to personal commitments outside of the dojo, it became more difficult than finally impossible for two of the original team of four to commit. Okada and Oyama, that's the Yasuhiko Oyama, were no longer able to take part. Their trainer, the 35-year-old Kurosaki, had to step up and fight himself. The upcoming challenge between Japanese karate and Muay Thai created considerable interest in the Japan, Japanese martial arts community. Naturally, the pride of Japan's long martial arts history was at stake. The team of three, now Kenji Kurosaki, Tadashi Nakamura and Akio Fujihira, arrived in Bangkok, Thailand, one month before the event, scheduled for mid-February 1964 at the famous Lumpini Stadium. The team used that month to acclimatize to the heat of tropical Bangkok. They trained each day in a small gym with all the windows closed. The conditions were stifling. Often they would collapse from oppressive heat and lack of air movement. That's exactly what Oyama had requested of his students so that when the fight night arrived, the open air of the normally unbearably hot Lumpini Stadium would seem like a gift from the gods. The event was held on February 12, 1964. Rules were Muay Thai rules plus full throws and headbutts. Tadashi Nakamura was the first up and won by TKO following a powerful roundhouse kick to the liver that dropped his opponent in the first round. The first ever karate versus Muay Thai bout remains an important moment in fight history and his victory over the Thai champion caught the Lumpini crowd by surprise. Next was Kenji Kurosaki, whose opponent was an elbow knockout specialist. Kurosaki worked to shut the dangerous elbow down by entering quickly and throwing him to the mat. The strategy worked well. Towards the end of the first round, however, his physically demanding fight plan started to take a toll on his 35 years, and Kurosaki took a mind-numbing left elbow to the neck. Unable to regain his feet, he lost by knockout. The last bout was Fujihira. It was one victory to the Muay Thai fighters and one to the Oyama Dojo team. The pressure on Fujihira was immense, but if there was one fighter who was ready, it was him. During this bout, Fujihira was on the receiving end of many classic Thai-style knees from his much taller opponent. Some say if it was anyone less, those kicks would have ended the bout, but he wasn't known as the little Oyama for nothing. Oyama has a saying, if you step back, you will meet defeat but if you step forward, victory shall be yours. Fujihira kept coming forward, bridging the gap with thigh kicks, followed by judo-style neck and hip throws. I have a footnote there, which is kind of funny. In an interview, Fujihira later said, I had never thrown a leg kick before that. I don't know 
I don't even know where it came from. He said he was just watching the other guys, so he thought he'd try it. Okay. Uh, his opponent replied by using his height and reach, launching long-range shin kicks to the body, followed by powerful knees to the head. Finally, Fujihira perfectly timed a right cross that dropped his opponent. He got up before the count, and as the referee street restarted the bout, Fujihira stepped forward with a shower of left and rights that dropped his opponent. This time he lay still on the mat, unconscious. And with that knock knockout blow, Japanese Jisen, full contact karate, was born. It is also regarded as the birth of kickboxing as well. It was a victory for Kyokushin and for Japanese martial arts in general. The name of Japanese karate saved and Masayama's new powerful karate, Kyokushin, became renowned and respected worldwide. The Hombu Dojo building that Masayama lived and taught at was officially opened in 1964. It was at this time Masayama Karate adopted the name Kyokushin, the ultimate truth. The success of Oyama's instructors in Thailand attracted a new wave of students to the, op to the newly opened dojo. In Japan, it had, has often be said, been said that Masoyama accepted the Muay Thai challenge in their own stadium and with their own rules and coming away victorious was the real starting point for Kyokushin's meteoric rise in popularity. Had the Oyama dojo team failed, history would not have been so kind. This experience and the particular interest in Muay Thai that Kurosaki took influenced the Kyokushin style of kicking. Low thigh kicks and the use of the shin in Mawashi Getty roundhouse kicks as opposed to the traditional ball of the foot and instep became a trademark of the Kyokushin fighting style. In 1966, Kurosaki was sent by Masoyama to teach Kyokushin in the Netherlands. He stayed for one year teaching at the dojo of renowned judoka and Kyokushin student of Oyama, John Blooming. Kurosaki inf Kurosaki's influence on the development of Kyokushin in Holland and later the birth and development of Dutch kickboxing, which has produced some of the world's most successful Kyokushin as well as kickboxing athletes, was significant. It has often been asked what it is, what is it that makes the Dutch kickboxers and stand-up fighters as a whole so formidable? In a nutshell, they don't draw upon boxing and Muay Thai alone, which every kickboxing gym does. It is the often underappreciated third element, the connection to Kyokushin and the indefatigable fighting spirit of Budo Karate. In March 1969, the same year that Masoyama held the first All Japan Full Contact Karate Tournament, Kurosaki opened the Mejiro Gym, which became Japan's leading home of kickboxing. He maintained a strong presence and influence in the Japanese world of fighting, kick, of, in the Japanese fight world until his passing. Akio Fujihira trained under Kurosaki and in 1971, fighting, fighting under the name Noboru Ozawa, took out the country's first bantamweight kickboxing title. In all, Fujihira had 67 bouts for 56 victories, 50 by knockout, eight losses, and three draws. Osawa, at the time 155 centimetres, which is about 5 foot 2, was labelled the little Oyama for his feats of amazing strength and Masoyama-like willingness to accept the challenges of tough training with untiring consistency. Before becoming a kickboxer, Osawa had 11 professional boxing matches for a 10 and 1 record. He also freely accepted challenges from Thai kickboxers where the usually part of the crowd admired him greatly and called him Little old sour with a big heart. And just a note I have on one of the photos, Little Oyama fighting under the name Noboru Ozawa, which means to overcome a great set, setback, a reference to his size, just a shade uh, 155 centimetres and just a shade over 50 kilograms. You may recall photos in Masayama's books of uh, someone doing the breathing techniques and also doing the handstand on their two fingers. Well, that's uh, that was Akira Fujihira, Little Oyama. It is said today that Osawa, under the severe demands of Devil Kurosaki, as his trainer was known, was the hardest training kickboxer in the world. From the establishment of the Kyokushin Hombu in 64, Oyama's Kyokushin organization expanded to have dojos in 123 countries. Registered members 
number over 10 million. Chogoshin remains one of the most widely practiced martial arts in the world, although since the passing of Masayama, it has fractured into numerous organizations, some with a fair claim to the lineage from Masayama, some without any real authority at all. At the time of his passing in 1994, Masayama was focused on two keys, the establishment of a new international headquarters and what he described as Kyogushin's Shin Soseki, or New Genesis. What this was going to be, no one can be sure, because Solside did not get the opportunity to lay the roots and fundamental structure of this new genesis before he left us. No doubt, though, that whatever rebirth he envisioned, it would have been in accord with the timeless teachings of Budo Karate already at the heart of Kyokushin. The importance of regular training, the endless search for truth, hope, humility, consideration for others, and the courage to face life's day-to-day -day inevitable battles as a warrior. As students of Solsai and anyone who trains Kyokushin is first and foremost a student of Solsai, we can best serve him by living those high ideals that he has taught us and putting that loyalty at the centre of our training. Over the years, Kyokushin has transformed from an art almost exclusively aimed at strong young fighters to one which increasingly embraces both men and women, adults and children, young and old. This is a matter of the march of time and many senior members today in the 60s, 70s and 80s began as teenagers in the formative years of Kyokushin. I often think too of the fighters in the first world tournament. I mean, if you were 22, 23 in the first world tournament, you'd be 68 or 69 years old today. So obviously those fighters who were uh, much older uh, in their 30s, 33, 34, 30, I mean, they'd be in their 70s, you know, and it's possible that some are even uh, in their early 80s. This expansion was always the ideal, and now as we pass into the third and fourth generation of Kyokushin students, it is a reality. Dojos worldwide now embrace this and open their doors to everyone. And whilst the strong young fighters still fight, the Kyokushin Karate of Masoyama also serves the aims and ideals of many others too. For some, it is a strong fighting art that prove, provides the core base to their professional fighting career. For others, it is a system of health in body and mind, a path of inner transformation. Or for others, a deeply technical and physical training method that, follow, that focuses primarily on performing kata as a beautiful form of artistic movement. All of these paths serve as many faces of the multifaceted Kyokushin way. Perhaps that deepening of what Masayama had already provided, thus allowing Kyokushin to truly be accessible to everyone, is what Masayama saw as his new genesis, the rebirth of Kyokushin. The style is only as strong as the students who represent it, and with the passing of Masayama, we must take responsibility to ensure that his legacy is never watered down or lost. He was recognized as the strongest man in a uh, karate man alive in his prime, even after his passing, his wisdom, leadership, and foresight. If we remain open to those gifts, continue to teach us as long as we remain connected to him in our hearts, minds, and training. As years pass, even masters of the art lose the youthfulness of their bodies. But the master who has dedicated a lifetime to honest training makes up for any loss with perfect timing and perception of the opponent's own intent. The master's movements become so unconscious, so perfectly timed that he seems to be in slow motion. That level of mastery, that mushin, the mind of no mind, is what we all aspire to. This is the responsibility of all of us who have chosen to follow as best we can the example Solsai set. What every Kyokushin organization teaches is essentially one. To find the true essence of the art, we must take personal ownership of our training and stay connected with the spirit of Masayama through his teachings. In this way, his Kyokushin will live on through our attitude and behavior and consequently through the attitude and behavior of our own students. So there you have it. That's, uh, oh, hang on, there's a little bit more here. I'll read this too. In Japan today, there are schools of fencing such as the Katori Shintoryu or the Nitoryu. That's the style created by uh, Miyamoto Musashi. I also went 
um, probably six months ago, maybe nine months ago, actually. I had a couple of days in Japan, so I jumped on a bicycle and I rode out to the Katori Shrine, which is the home of the Katori Shinto Ryu. And there is a tombstone there of the founder of Katori Shinto Ryu, and that goes back to, I think, over 600 years. The temple itself, or the shrine itself, the difference between a temple and a shrine, if you haven't been to Japan, is a shrine is uh, of the Shinto, the, the native Shinto religion of Japan, whereas a temple is a Buddhist religious uh, site. So that's the main two reasons, the main two differences. And in the, uh, in the Japanese society, they generally very, very comfortably accept both. They're, they're not exclusive. And so in the Dojo Kun, where the line says, uh, I think it's line five, says, Shinbutsu uh, ototobi, um, kenjo no bitoko wazure zaru koto, shinbutsu ototobi. We will, the word shinbutsu, is written with the two characters for God and Buddha. It's uniquely a Japanese word which refers to the Japanese uh, ability to combine both the gods of the Shinto uh, uh, animistic faith and Buddhism. So the word Shinbutsu is, honestly, it's probably exclusive to Japan. So I know that when I translated the Dojo Kun, I, trained that, I changed that to uh, religious principles, because the concept of religious principles, which is essentially what Shinbutsu means, it means the fundamental religious principles at the foundation of Japanese society. So I changed it to uh, religious principles because then that covers every everyone. It covers even if you're an atheist, your religious principle is atheism. Uh, if you're a, a Buddhist, a Jew, a Christian, a, a Hindu, a, 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 a Muslim, they're all basically covered by uh, religious principles. So that's why I think that's important because I know it's very important to Solsai. It's not unreasonable to see the future of Masayama's Kyokushin Karate following a similar course. There's no doubt in the years to come its valuable contribution to society as well as its strength and integrity will become ever increasingly recognised. The responsibility for such a future lies squarely on the shoulders of everyone who trains each night in the thousands of dojos around the world. Train consistently hard with due respect to age and injury and always hold lofty dreams in your heart. Be kind and thoughtful to others, be fair to all and live each day fully without regretting what has passed or fearing what may lie ahead. The quality of the years depends on the qualities of the way we choose to spend uh, to live today, the next minute, the next hour, so do not rest. Look the challenge of life squarely in the face and attack it with all the courage, strength and purity of your heart holds. Uh, this is the spirit of Kyokushin, the spirit of us. And then I put a quote of uh, Thoreau, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavours to live the life he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. So there you go. That's the tail end of the uh, history section from my book. And, uh, and uh, I really enjoy that because um, I'm just going to, I've got to sit cross-legged. I've been sitting in Caesar the whole time I read that. So my feet have gone to sleep. I can't feel a thing. But anyway, uh, I just thought I'd read that section from the book. Um, that's an interesting, so I'm just going to turn this light off. That's an interesting a uh, little history on the on the connection between Kyokushin and kickboxing. I find it very interesting. Uh, ben, Shian, I think I have read your book at least six times back to front and referenced it in my training count countless times. I cannot wait to read my autobiography. <laughs> oh, mate, I, doubt, I don't know about that. I'm more interested in getting the message of Celso across. Of course, Graham, Graham Rose, what an honour. It's always good to have Graham Rose here. If you didn't catch Graham's interview... I uh, put that link, I'll put it again just there, just because I have it handy. But uh, Graham did a, an interview with um, with Paddy Pinto on the Kogashin Shuffle. Go and check that out. Mike, the first karate book I ever found and bought, bought in 74 was a small paperback edition of Masayama's Karate in Practice. That's Bobby Lowe's, yes. Yes, Masayama's Karate as Practice in Japan by Bobby Lowe. I've got a copy upstairs. In fact, it was... Um, it was given to me personally by Bobby Lowe and he wrote a very 
beautiful and very personal message in the front, which I won't share because it is very personal. But, uh, yeah, how about that? That was one of the very first books I got to Mike. The very first martial arts I book was, bought was on Chinese weapons, would you believe? And not because I was interested in Chinese weapons, but simply because it was the first martial arts book I found in a bookshop, in a, in a newsagent. And then soon after, in March 74, I think, I bought This Is Karate. And would you believe that book, This Is Karate, cost me $14, which in 74, I think it took me two weeks of working every day after school to uh, save that amount of money up. Uh, Rochelle, that was interesting. Yeah, look, thanks. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that went a little bit longer than I thought, but I'm so glad to see that a few people hung in there. And uh, that's that's the tail end of the history chapter of uh, the upcoming second edition of the Budo Karate of Masayama. And I really hope I put that dragon thing up on the wall too. You see that? There. I put it up on the back wall for fun. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed that. I, I really enjoy reading it. I mean, um, Mike Clark, Mike left that message there that the first book he had read was, Ma oh, was Bobby Lowe's book. Um, but Mike's also written some great books. There's a link to uh, one of Mike's books. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the influence of Masayama can never be underestimated. And it's, it's when you realise that um, the, the word kickboxing was coined by the promoter who was very close friends with Masayama, who uh, was the one that uh, organised the match between the Kyokushin fighters and the Muay Thai fighters at Lumpini Stadium. Um, when you realise that connection and then that word kickboxing was coined on the night, would you believe, when they went back afterwards and uh, were celebrating their victory, that, uh, um, that word kickboxing, Boxing was coined there and then, and I think that's such a fascinating part of history. Um, so there you have it, us, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. I know we didn't train hard. Well, well that little deck of cards was pretty good. Where, where's that? I'll put them all together again now, but I think we pushed out about 30 out of 13 cards. We got seven. Oh, I, can't, I can't tell, but we got quite a lot of burpees done, so that's, that was a good little short, sharp sweat for you. Better than nothing, you've got to do something every day. You're only as good as – you're never as good as your last workout. You're only as good as this morning's workout. So the only time you're only as good as your last workout is if it was this morning. <laughs> Don't kid yourself that that workout you did in August last year counts because it doesn't, okay? Uh, thanks for joining me. That was just um, just on an hour, just under an hour. I, I didn't know that it would take that long. But anyway, uh, look, really appreciate it. I, I, if you appreciate it, and um, uh, look, I'm endlessly grateful to all the uh, Patreon family. There are so many of you here, and I really appreciate you all coming along. I sent that mail out to you yesterday. I hope you got it. Um, I've got some more stuff coming up next month. Um, and, uh, and I really, Daniel, I know that you're one of my Patreon family. And, and I, look, if you, if you want, if you enjoy what I'm doing, show the love because I generally put that money from Patreon towards making these videos better. And I've just recently used some of the Patreon money to invest in a membership website uh, software program. So what that will allow me to do is create a membership website where I plan to uh, put uh, upwards of 2,000 videos, training videos, everything from the warm-up, all the basics, the moving basics, the kata, the bunkai, the applications, all the five ranges, techniques in the kick, punch, headbutt, grapple and, and ground range, all that will be going into that uh, membership website, which I'll be making available. Um, Mike Clark really enjoyed reading it. They can't wait for new publications. Good. Thank you too, Mike. And I'm really uh, enjoying, I'm looking forward to uh, sitting down with your books that you very kindly sent. Alan, good on you, buddy. Thank you too. Daniel, can't wait to get hold of your book. Look, I'm really excited. We'll be, once I get the web page up, we'll be taking pre-orders for that and we'll offer the uh, Patreon members, obviously, a very solid discount as well, um, but that won't be too long. Of course, Harry, I didn't see your name pop up there, but thanks for coming. Damien, good on you, man. Thank you, too. Tibiru, good to see you, man. All the way from, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always scared to say it, but I, I, if I recall you from Hungary, um, I'm fairly certain. But anyway, good to see you, Tibiru. Nice to see you, man. 
Rob De Souza from uh, Tassie. Thanks, Jan. Look forward to when the new book comes out. Thanks for the Patreon email. I'm glad you got it. Good. Yep, thanks. Get on board, people. Good. Thanks, Graham. And I really enjoyed your interview, man. I've got to tell you, I listened to a lot of interviews, but yours is really good, and I'll tell you why I enjoyed yours. Romania, I'm so sorry. Exactly. Sorry, Tiberi. I knew it was one of those. And as soon as I see Romania, I recall that it was Romania. My apologies. Um, so anyway, yeah, look, Graham, it's always good to see you, and, and, and I really enjoyed your interview, be, interview because I have to tell you, you're a real quiet achiever, and I remember the days you came and trained with us in Brisbane. You didn't stay very long, but that was the beginning for our roots as well, and then you went on to great things, and you've always done it with such a wonderful humility. And uh, one of the big things seems to be missing in the martial arts world today is humility. You know, people get a little carried away, and then, you know, especially I think of the times where I've translated for Solsei over the year, over the years where Solsei has been talking to someone, and for some reason, 10, 20, 30 years down the track, they think that the content of the conversation changes. I have very clear memories and I have very clear notes of all these things too. And it's just, I just wish somebody would realize, first of all, that uh, humility is one of the key um, ingredients of Kyokushin. And Graham, I, I really, Graham Rose, I really think you're a perfect example of that. Good on you, Paul. Thanks for coming, man. And Tiberio, he's from Romania, but he lives in Chicago, um, and which means it's probably, what is it, one or two o'clock in the morning there, man, or well, midnight or something like that. Thanks, Ben. Good to see you, and it's good to see your name. Come and drop in sometime say hello. And uh, Gaza, best-looking jumper. Yep, look at this. This is from Gaza's dojo down at the Gold Coast. It's, I, I, this is really warm, I've got to tell you. So thank you, everyone. Sorry, Tiberio, my, my bad, but uh, I always remember your name. I just uh, keep forgetting that it's Romania, not Hungary. <laughs> anyway, good on you, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that read, and I'll catch you on Friday. My student, Ben Tipper, is coming. Ben's been training with me consistently for many years, and uh, he's like a little mini me. He moves very similarly, and uh, he's really absorbed a lot of the ideas that I have. So uh, that'll be a really fun session. We're going to cover some great two-man stuff that you'll be able to incorporate because the world's starting to get back to normality. Good to see you, Tiberi. Yep, good. Raj, get better soon, man. I'm sorry to hear that you're not well. So get better all the way. Namaste. Thank you, everybody, and uh, I really appreciate it. Us.